Hello and welcome from the heart of London's West End. This is The Bell, the Teachers TV programme. They're already calling an entertainment show for teachers. And boy, what a show have we got. He's taken America by storm with his anti-bullying philosophy. The scary guy. Shall we? Now, teachers spend much of their time exhorting pupils not to judge by appearances. This philosophy was graphically practiced on Teachers TV by a man who could have cultivated a bland, conventional exterior to contrast with his message, but he didn't. For seven days and seven nights, don't say one negative word about another human on the planet. For seven days and seven nights, don't call another person a name other than their own. Even if you think the names you make up for people are funny. They're not. Now we're going to find out what you're really made of. If you think you're tough, shut your mouth. That's tough. He's traveled the world spreading his philosophy against bullying, anger, and hatred. Please welcome the new face of love, the scary guy. <laughs> Fantastic to have you here. Thanks. So how do you go from running a successful tattoo business in Arizona to thinking I'm going to take the anger out of the world? Well, in 1996, someone I've never met my entire life in the tattoo industry ran a full page ad in the newspaper and it said, are you tired of dealing with scary guys with war paint facial tattoos? And when I read the ad in the paper that day, I slammed it down on the counter and I thought to myself, no. Who would say such a thing about someone they don't even know, let alone print it in a newspaper? The first thought that came to my mind, Peter, was what am I going to do to get this dude back? You know, revenge. I thought, well, I'll jump in my hot rod Lincoln, I'll find out where the guy lives, I'll drive over to his house, and I'll run over his dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, nah, 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 that's not my style, I'm a good guy, he's a bad guy. Well, I stepped up onto my pedestal, and I declared myself the good guy, and he was a bad guy. And when I was on my pedestal bragging and gloating about how great I was as a human being, my life flashed before me. And I realized very quickly that I was a name caller, a hater, I could stereotype and categorize people at will. And I masked my entire life in sarcasm and humor. When I found out that's kind of who I was, and I came to that realization, I was motivated out of anger. I jumped down off my pedestal. I went back to my warehouse where my wife and I, I lived in Tucson, Arizona, and I said, honey, I'm packing my bags. And she said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to travel the world to help people see each other differently from the inside out. She said, how are you going to do that? And I said, I haven't got a clue. I know one thing. I think I just wasted 43 years of my life running my mouth thinking I was hip and cool. But that's a terrible thing to, uh, to deal with, though. Most people kind of think, I'll try and be a little bit nicer and stuff. I mean, what made you dedicate it? I mean, it's almost like an evangelical thing you've got about it, isn't it? Yeah, well, what happened was during that period in time, it took me about two years. I took on the moniker of the scary guy. And what I realized... Well, how, how did you come up with that? <laughs> I don't know, dude. <laughs> Take a peek. <laughs> um, I realized very quickly that uh, as I was turning on the television and reading newspapers from around the world, actually kids were starting to kill each other over their differences. It was no longer just a bank robbery here or there or an assault in a home or a domestic violence. Kids were actually killing one another. And I looked in the mirror one day and I said, ooh, maybe this will work. I need to go tell the kids what's, what's really going on around the world, yeah. But how do you work it out then? Because you've got quite a detailed program and there's different stages that are getting involved. It's not just the kind of don't insult anyone no. for seven days and, and, and seven nights. It's a much bigger thing. Now, how do you get your head around uh, developing something that will be universally uh, appealing? Well, the programs have developed over the last seven years, and I've been invited in by 75 different countries around the world, and I tour the United Kingdom quite frequently and work in schools. Um, 
And what I've discovered is there's actually four stages that we take the kids through. The first stage is awareness. We bring everybody to the same level of awareness as to how they all participate in what we call the world's number one social diseases, hate, violence, and prejudice. Now in schools, of course, that translates into bullying, name calling, labeling, uh, physical assault, and some form like that. So what I do is I don't go into school and I don't say, hey, you're the bad guys and you're the good guys. We level the playing field and we say we're all involved in this whole process as learned behavior. That's, that's the first phase. And when you uh, go into, uh, say, uh, a primary school with young kids as opposed to, you know, uh, older kids, teenagers, what, what's the difference uh, in the message? Well, of course, in the secondary schools, it's a little more in your face, intense, and you know, we get right down to the point, and uh, we call it and we tell it like it is, and, and we give them an opportunity to, t to go through those kinds of things. When we go into primary schools, we drop it back a little bit, and there's a little more humor involved, there's a lot more fun involved, and, and uh, the kids really get involved at that level, at a different level. And do you ever come up against uh, an insoluble problem, you know, kids who, who aren't open to accepting a, a message from someone from a, a different country who looks very different from them? Actually, if I, if I have 40 five-year-olds in a room and I say to the five-year-olds, let's change the planet, they go, really scary guy, where do we sign up? If I got 40 high school kids in the room and I, school, and I say this, let's change the planet, they go, He's gay. <laughs> if I got 40 adults in the room, you ready for this one? And I go, let's change the planet. They go, I wonder what kind of drugs he's been doing. <laughs> and that's kind of how it goes. So the younger they are, five-year-olds, six, seven, they're more receptive. They haven't got the learned behavior based in fear and lack of knowledge. And what about uh, teachers? Do they sort of have, have an idea that you're going to bring them good or in a way are you, are you taking their power away from them sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I wish I could take the power away, but I can't. No, the teachers, some of them know that I'm coming in and some of them understand the program. They've done their research. And quite frankly, some of them don't know the program and they participate in, a, in the first session and the second sessions just as if they were part of the, the kids group. And. Culturally, is America a different place to Britain, have you found, uh, working in schools over here? Well, if I were to stack up the American children against the British children, I would have to say the behaviors are very, very similar. You still have all the name calling, you have the put downs, you have the banter, you have uh, physical violence and assault in American schools, just like you have here in the UK schools. And what frightens you? You. <laughs> I wish I could believe that. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the scary guy. <laughs> <laughs>